Welcome to ZCast, everybody. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here in person at IBM Think 2023. And I'm joined today by David Cox, VP of AI Models for IBM. David, why don't you say hi? Just uh, give us a quick introduce, uh, introduction to yourself. What does the VP of AI Models do here? Right, so uh, I'm David Cox. It's a uh, pleasure to be on here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, so I'm in charge of IBM's, uh, IBM Research's effort to build internal foundation models and foundation model technologies that ultimately can drive business value for our customers. Yeah, now I noticed here at uh, Think 23, as I expected, AI would be a big part of the show. Um, obviously, it's been a big part of every IBM show since you launched Watson in 2010. Uh, but it seems like the media frenzy around AI has reached an all-time high because of generative AI and chat GPT. Uh, and is that really warranted? Do you, do you think that created somewhat of a tipping point that I've heard about for AI? Yeah, I think uh, generative AI and what we call foundation models, these large models that are trained on vast quantities of data without requiring annotations really represent a sea change in how we do AI. I've actually been studying AI basically my entire adult life, and I've gotten used to being surprised by how fast progress has accelerated, and I'm even more surprised now how fast things are going. And really what it boils down to is the fact that we can uh, now enable an AI solution without having to do it the traditional way, which is very labor intensive, where we yes. curate a data set for a particular task, and you know that might take up to 80 or 90% of the effort to field an AI solution. And then you'd have to get uh, you know, experts who have very particular skills that might be expensive or, or hard to find. Uh, now, with by building on top of the foundation that these, these foundation models provide, uh, in many cases you can get to value, to business value, with just a few examples that you've annotated, or in some cases, just by telling the model what you want. And that just lowers the threshold to using AI all over uh, your enterprise, which is really powerful, and we're really excited about it here at IBM. Yeah, and so that sort of uh, dispels the myth a little bit that consumer AI is not what businesses are going to use. I hear a lot about hallucinations and things from bad data, but this is something I think companies really need to understand, right, is that the models they use, the data they use is unique to them, it's part of their business set, and so it's much of what we see in the consumer world, we won't see in business, correct? Yeah, and it's certainly the case. Like what, what a consumer might need or wants in an AI system is different from what an enterprise needs. Enterprises need to uh, know that the data and the models are, are clean in some sense, that their models aren't going to produce you know, biased or even toxic outputs. Uh, and at, we at IBM uh, Research are working on curating large data sets where we very carefully used AI to curate that data, to remove uh, potentially objectionable content, and then we're training enterprise-grade models you know, really focused on delivering business value today for our customers on top of that. At the same time, we're also, uh, you know, there's an open ecosystem and there's a, there's a flourishing of new technologies being released every, every day, it seems, you know, new models. So we're making all of that open source capability available to our customers in a single, uniform, coherent platform, you know, based on our hybrid cloud foundation, Red Hat OpenShift, yep. where you can run where your data is, you can take advantage of this open ecosystem, and that's ultimately, uh, you know, I think what's needed to deliver business value for yeah. our customers. Now, now, there's always a lot of news at everything come in, right? The big news, I think it's fair to say, was the announcement of uh, Watson X, right? So can you talk about what Watson X is, and your specific do domain is WatsonX.ai, and then dive a little deeper into that. Yeah, so, so Watson X is a platform for this new sort of era of AI that we're entering into. And that combines AI models and tooling together with uh, data, uh, you know, the, the tools that we need to access and, and curate our data, together with the tools we need to govern the entire process. So we bring those things together in a single unified platform that our customers can, can benefit from. We call that Watson X. And then Watson X.AI is a, a series of tools that allow us to do all the traditional things we used to do with AI and ML, but in addition now also harness the power of generative AI and foundation models uh, to, you know, and we, we, we're, we're, um, we're announcing products like our Prompt Lab, which allows you to, uh, enterprise developers to engineer prompts to, to uh, get, get uh, foundation models to perform certain tasks. We're also uh, announcing a tuning studio that allows customers to bring their own data to the table 
and then customize those foundation models for their particular case. And as you mentioned, you know, the, the data that an enterprise has is a really valuable thing. It's, it's part of the, you know, it's the crown jewels in many cases. Yeah. You know, you know, an enterprise, you know, your company is, you are the experts in your domain. You have that data, you have that experience. You need to create value with that together uh, with, with these new AI tools. And that's what WatsonX.ai is designed from the ground up to do. Now you keep using the term foundation models. Uh, for the audience who may not be familiar with them, what is a foundation model? Yeah, so that's a great question. So uh, what a foundation model is, these are typically based on neural network, a neural network architecture called the transformer. That's not a strict requirement, but that's really the, the thing that ignited this new revolution. And they're trained with a, a technique called self-supervised learning. And so what that, that allows the AI to train the AI. Yeah, basically, yeah. that's the right idea. So it's self-supervised. So we don't need to annotate all this data because annotation is very you know, time-consuming and expensive. What we can do instead is have a large corpus of unlabeled data. The model can learn the structure of that. And then you literally build on the foundation that that provides. So with, with much less data, with much less effort, with much less expertise, you can then build a solution you know, leveraging what the foundation model underneath has learned. Okay, now as part of the uh, Watson X, uh, uh, announcement, you released four models, I believe, right? There are a handful of models. Can you just talk quickly about what those are and how they get used? Yeah, so, so in the coming months, we're going to be starting to make available to customers uh, different model families. And one of our... To be clear, there's many more models that you have, but you'll release them to businesses slowly, right? That's right. Yeah. So, so at IBM, uh, our perspective is that foundation models and generative AI, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. And it's not a one vendor sort of rules all. We're going to see different stakeholders. We're going to see open source. We're going to see different styles of model for different purposes. We're going to see different sizes of models be used for different uh, purposes. So uh, one thing about these models, uh, you know, they, they can be they can be small and fast and efficient to run. They can be larger ones that can have more advanced capabilities. Matching the size of the model and the capabilities of the model to the problem you're trying to solve allows businesses to save costs, to deploy them efficiently, uh, even on-prem, and that's that kind of flexibility is going to be really important for the long-term sustainability of foundation gotcha. models in terms of cost, but also energy. So the carbon output uh, for training these models and running them is a concern, and our customers uh, have told us that they want us to help them to make these workloads run efficiently. Um, so we have a number of different families of models that we'll be making available to customers over the coming months. Um, we, we, they're all named after different kinds of stones. This is a, a kind of a nerdy naming scheme, uh, but uh, you know you we have, have some naming scheme. We got to have some naming yeah, scheme, yeah. And, and why not? Why not play to the nerds, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're proud nerds here. So uh, you know we have models that we name granite, which are uh, decoder-only models. These are very good for generative tasks. We have models that we call sandstone which are uh, encoder-decoder models. These are really good if you want to fine-tune and specialize for a particular task. Uh, and then we have um, models like Obsidian. So these are based on novel architectures that we're developing in IBM Research, which have interesting trade-offs between model capacity and inference performance. And then finally, we have a suite of models that we're calling Slate, which are encoder-only models, which aren't generative, but which are very valuable for performing a large range of different kinds of enterprise NLP tasks, and we're making those available. All of these trained on a trusted, curated uh, set of data that we've been putting together here at IBM. Okay, and I also know that IBM believes in openness. In fact, everything, I think during the keynote, I heard the word open uh, quite a few times. You also have a partnership with Hugging Face, right? And to describe that and how that helps your customers. Yeah, so one thing we know at IBM is that open ecosystems in the end win. And open always wins. Yeah, and it's uh, there's tremendous power, tremendous creativity in the community, when, especially when we work together. So we're very proud to announce a partnership with Hugging Face. Hugging Face uh, is a is an extremely well-known name in the space yeah. uh, of, of open source uh, in the domain of models and AI. Um, and we're going to be integrating their catalog of models so that we can, uh, our customers can seamlessly pull from their catalog uh, into our tools. So you can you don't have to make the choice uh, between open and other models. We want to make those all available in one coherent framework, one coherent platform where you can run anywhere uh, to solve business problems. All right, David, I appreciate your time. I just have one last question. Yep. Uh, next year at Think 24, how far, how much progress do you think we'll have made? Oh gosh, you know, yeah. uh, you know. I, sometimes I, I want a little crystal ball. To look yeah, at. a little yeah. crystal ball. Yeah. Um, so. You know, having worked in AI for a while, you know, AI years are kind of like dog years. It's like a seven to one <laughs> ratio or something. So I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I, I would, I would be hesitant to make any bold predictions. 
But I, I think this train is continuing to, to, to ride. I think we're going to see increased capabilities. I think we're going to see great examples where our customers are getting practical use out of these, these, uh, these tools. And I'm really excited mostly to see what they come up with. I mean, I, we, we have big, big plans and big ambitions for what we're going to do in this space. But I'm also excited to see what our customers do with these new tools. Yeah, I do think we're rapidly approaching the point, though, where customers don't think it's risky to deploy AI, but it'll be more risky to not deploy it. And that's when you know that hockey stick adoption really takes uh, off. So, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, David, uh, uh, thanks for joining me. On behalf of David Cox from IBM and ZS Caraval from ZK Research, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.